in 1994, a drastic rule change took place to the National Football League. In an effort to increase parity, the NFL instituted the salary cap. The first ever salary cap was set at $34.6 million, and under the salary cap, no NFL team could spend more than that on players' salaries. However, that doesn't mean that teams didn't try to circumvent their way around the cap from time to time. Most famously, the Denver Broncos were fined twice and lost two draft picks for trying to get around the salary cap from 1996 to 98. And one of the lesser known scandals that was prevalent during the early days of the salary cap era involved the Miami Dolphins. In 1995, the NFL had to decide on something big. If a player buys stock in the team's owner's company, is that a violation of the salary cap? To fully tell this story, we need to go back to 1990, when Wayne Huizenga bought 15% of the Miami Dolphins. A few years later, in 1994, Huizenga bought the remaining shares of the team and became the team's full owner. Huizenga was a very successful businessman, having created Waste Management, Blockbuster, and AutoNation. And in 1995, he was about to buy another waste management company, buying Republic Waste Industries. At the time, star quarterback Dan Marino had two years left on his contract and was in the middle of negotiating a new deal. Keep in mind that Marino had held out before. In 1985, he walked out of training camp and sat for over a month after failing to strike a deal with then-owner Joe Robbie. When Huizenga bought Republic Waste Industries on May 22, 1995, the company was going for $4.50 a share on the stock market. Around this time, Dan Marino purchased $390,000 worth of stock in the company. Roughly 150 associates took advantage of Huizenga's offer to purchase stock in Republic Waste, and supposedly, Marino was not treated any differently from any of the other associates. This investment by Marino turned out to be a really smart one, because roughly four months later, on September 1st, the stock closed to $22. Dan Marino's $390,000 investment was now worth roughly $2 million. Immediately, this raised eyebrows. The owner of the Dolphins offered Dan Marino an opportunity to buy stock in his company. And now, Marino was making millions as part of something that wasn't even on his NFL contract. So does the purchase of stock in the owner's company violate salary cap rules? Surprisingly enough, the NFL ruled that this was completely legal. The Dolphins did not commit a salary cap violation. Dolphins general manager Eddie Jones defended Marino's purchase, saying that this was a personal investment, was personal business, and had nothing to do with the ongoing contract negotiations. A big reason why this wasn't a violation in the eyes of the NFL was because Marino was supposedly not treated any differently from any of the other 150 people who bought stock in the company around the same time. And it helped that Marino was a longtime player in the stock market, and has had some wins over the years like this one, and some massive losses. So there you have it. Dan Marino buying stock in Wayne Huizenga's company was not a violation of the salary cap. 